But we can see what the Liberal Party leadership is trying to do here, and it seems like they are trying to replicate what they did with their shares franking credits campaign against Labor's election policy back in 2019, and that was an issue that they manipulated effectively and managed to convince a lot of people that they were going to lose out. But I think there's still two major differences here. The Liberal Party is in opposition now, and these sort of campaigns, they are less effective from opposition and what Labor is proposing now and that's taxing people with three million dollars in their superannuation accounts at a higher level that's actually quite a simple political message to sell three million dollars in your superannuation account well to many people that is a lot of money well for it is a lot of money anyway but most people will never earn three million dollars in their entire working lifetime so I think this is a very easy message to sell it makes a lot of sense on equity grounds Generally, this is a good reform and claws back money from people who can easily afford it. My main issue is that it doesn't actually go far enough. And we can see that the Labor government is probably still a bit spooked by how easily these types of issues can be magnified into something that they're not. And pushing this reform over to 2025 makes it a little bit less contentious. It should be coming into effect in 2024. But Maybe all of this is part of Anthony Albanese's cautious approach to government, which is what he promised during the last federal election campaign, but he should actually be going in a lot harder. There's going to be very few people who can't afford it, who will be caught innocently. I, I should also say that. And $3 million to me seems like a pretty fair amount to start these cuts. Most advisors suggest you should have somewhere between 800 and a, and a million, which very few people are going to get because the policy of the last 10 years or so, where we've moved to a gig economy, where we've moved to more contractors, where we've moved to more jobs like Uber and Uber Eats and the casualization of the workforce, there's a lot less money going into superannuation. And the, superannua the compulsory superannuation was brought in to try and alleviate the financial pressure that a large number of retirees starting about five years ago and continuing through for about another five years in the, the baby boomer generation retiring, the strain it was going to put onto the, the pension system. So encouraging people who could afford it to have their own private pensions wasn't awful policy. For some reason, the Liberal Party, the party of individualism, the party of smaller government, the party of encouraging people to not rely on welfare, hated it probably because it put up a lot of wages by 10% or 9%, even though with tax deductions and the reduction of your income, a lot of that money was essentially being paid by the taxpayer anyway. The Liberal Party and some of its followers don't seem to have a terribly nuanced view of how this stuff works. And that's either they're really not fit for office or they're really disingenuous 